You are looking at the famous or once famous Winchester Mystery House in California, which you can read about if you like, and you should if you know nothing about it. Uh, but the important thing for us is that it was the inspiration for Disney World and Land's Haunted Mansion ride. That ride was one of my absolute favorites growing up, and my sister and I would always look forward to it, uh, the Disney World version, because we grew up in Florida, and this here is a prop from it. But before we get to that, I will make a point uh, on the internet that I've held for my entire life. Main Street Disney World is one of the great aesthetic successes that you'll ever get to stroll through. A, you know, ridiculously elaborate fairy tale castle at the end of a Norman Rockwell-esque Main Street USA. It's a great dichotomy, and it's a idealized, like hyper-idealized version of reality and a hyper-idealized version of fantasy, all in one image that you get to walk through and around. And I still think that every time I'm there. On to the Haunted Mansion itself. There it is. Uh, this was conceived of in 1951, a long time before the original park even existed. One of the original Imagineers, uh, Harper Goff, that's his name, Harper Goff, uh, drew a Crooked Street going off of Main Street and leading to a church with a graveyard and a spooky mansion. And that all would have been looking down on Main Street from a hill. So, pretty cool concept, but that's not what they went with. And then the idea was to do a New Orleans-style area that would have an antebellum mansion. And finally, they landed on the Winchester Mystery House inspiration. I think one of them was actually visiting the house because it's a tourist attraction, and that's how that all started. So, speaking of starting, they started construction of this in 63, and it didn't open until 69. The Orlando version opened in 71. Anyway, uh, the ride itself is just fun. It's not meant to be actually scary. You can see that kind of in the faces here. And that was a big bone of contention. Uh, there was a debate originally about whether it should be a frightening ride or a funny one. The official story is that they compromised, but uh, it's hard to see that when you're there. It really is just more fun. Anyway, here's an actual piece from the ride, uh, the Orlando version. So I probably saw this when I was a kid, this exact mask. Of course, it was on an animatronic doll. And this here is Ezra, one of the three ghosts that uh, hitchhikes on the ride via projection. Uh, and as kids, we always thought that was really neat. The Haunted Mansion is definitely a fan favorite. Uh, one piece of memorabilia I saw sell for $108,000. Meanwhile, an employee stole a bunch of stuff from the Haunted Mansion not that long ago and uh, luckily got busted. He made about $30,000 uh, before that happened, though, and then, of course, I had to go find the items, explain that they were stolen, get them back, and he had a high-profile customer, too. Of course, I just accidentally stumbled on this when I was researching the ride itself uh, for this video, but anyway, it's kind of a funny story, because he was 24 years old, and he gives the cops all this attitude when he gets caught. Uh, he tries to grab his cell phone out of their hands after they'd taken it, uh, and they were not having that, so they threw him to the ground, as he deserved. Uh... And he, like I said, he gives him all this attitude, and then he asks if he can call his mom. What a tough guy. But uh, this was the high-profile customer that we talked about, Robin Lopez of the Milwaukee Bucks, or at least he played for them when this happened. I don't know where he plays now. Uh, bought a bunch of that stuff, so he's a fan of the ride. And, of course, he had to give it back, which he, you know, did readily once he realized they were stolen. And anyway, that was quite an aside, but I thought it was interesting. So, yeah, here it is. This is really cool, because... And, you know, how many millions of people pass these kinds of things in Disney World over the years, over the decades? This mask here was used from the very opening of the park, uh, all the way to the 90s. And it's this great little piece of artistic work. There's my hand to give you a sense of the size. You know, I like the, uh, the fake hair. Like, never stopped and thought about that kind of thing. So yeah, there's actual, you know, fake hair on its head and eyebrows. Uh, you know, look at the eyes. You can tell they're hand-painted. He kind of looks like Thanos, doesn't he? Especially with that jawline. And then meanwhile, when you flip it over to the inside, then it looks like a scroll, right? Or maybe a gremlin. Either way, that's just kind of cool to see the inside of one of these things, right? Never thought I would. Never wondered what they look like on the inside, certainly. And I will give you one final view. thought this was very interesting. A little piece of Walt Disney World. I know some people can be real cynical about Disney, and yeah, it costs a lot of money and whatnot. But when you're a little kid... It is basically mind-blowing, and it really was a tremendous amount of talent that was consolidated in the effort to, to uh, design all this stuff and build both parks. Well, there you go. Thank you.